Hello, this is Franz Spohn, and I'm ready to fly away. Uh, today, we're going to develop ideas of how you can get space in your drawings. And so there are things that we refer to as distal cues. So these are things that you can use when you're constructing all the images on your paper in order to kind of give you a feeling for space. So I've already, with uh, my watercolors, and I used a piece of mixed media paper, and I made a cloud scene in the sky, because since we're talking about flying away, we're going to have some, uh, some birds. Now, when I draw the bird, I just did that with my pencils and cut it out on a piece of paper. So he's flying around here. And you could tell that already we're in some sense of space because the bird is in front of the cloud. So his head is blocking the cloud, so I know he's in front of that cloud. Now, if we put another bird there, let's say they're flying in different directions, they could be right above each other. You don't know which one is closer to you. But if I were to move this one over, let's put this one about here, and let's put this one about here, then you get a sense that this bird here is closer to you because he is overlapping this bird. And the other thing that happens, too, is that there's a tendency for things to be closer to the bottom of the page, have a tendency to be closer to you the viewer, and so as you put things near the bottom, they're going to seem to be closer. Now, let's say we have another one here, and I have another bird that I've already drawn. Okay, it could be a small bird in the same space. Let's take one of these away again. We'll have them face each other. So it could just be that this is a parent bird, and this is a young, uh, strapping young bird flying away. Or another thing that we can do, let's get our birds arranged again. All right, so this bird is up here in front of that bird. And then this bird is overlapping that one. And because this is a smaller bird and it's being overlapped, we have a tendency to think that things that are smaller, that are the same as things that are in the foreground, are farther away and distant. So now um, let's do, I'm going to take another piece of paper here. And well, this is, uh, while this is going on, this is happening down here. So I'm going to take a, a pencil. I'm going to just sketch a few things in. Now, let's say I'm going to have a, a chicken who doesn't fly qu quite as much. And this chicken is very envious of those birds up there. And he's looking up, maybe even pointing. Now, <clears throat> with this bird, I made it really kind of large. It's near the bottom. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add feathers. Now, another thing that can make a difference between whether something looks close or far away is the amount of detail. So those birds are way up in the sky, so I haven't put individual feathers in there. I put some shading to kind of give them some form. But now I'm putting feathers here. And then another thing that often makes a difference between whether something is close or not is the intensity of the color. So I'm going to make the crown on this chicken bird really bright, and then let's say in the background, I'll have another chicken. Everybody's very excited about a bunch of birds up above. Okay, and so when I go to color this in, I'm gonna make it a little less bright. So color has a tendency to fade the farther out you go. So we've got overlapping, size variation, position on the page, either if that's a separate composition or this one, brightness of color. All right, now one last thing that you can do. I'm going to make, make a little scene here. This is just a very brief explanation of perspective. Parallel lines have a tendency to go together in a point over a long distance. So if this is the road, it's going to kind of almost come to a point, you know, railroad tracks. Heaven forbid that that chicken will still be standing there when a train comes through, but 
And then to that same point, if I put like uh, telephone wires or something like that, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to get smaller as it goes back. So already, in just a very quick fashion, I've got larger scale. I've got brighter colors. I, I have the perspective coming across there. And one very last thing that you can do, I love these, uh, <coughs> these gel sticks and gel crayons are really good for shadows. So you can also put little shadows in, in a couple places. OK, and there we go. So all those different things that you can do to give a little more space to when you fly away from somewhere.